Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we'll be doing a top 5 list for easiest civilizations to master in Age of Empires 2. Being proficient and mastering a civilization is the best way to climb ELO fast and it's actually the best way to become better at the game because once you master a civilization you can then start focusing on improving yourself as a player. If you're confused and don't know how to play a civ and things are just really hard to put together then you're not really going to tap into your full potential as a player. This list is also going to be great for beginner players out there if it's yourself or a friend or someone you want to recommend a civilization to who is a beginner or a new player this list would be amazing for you guys because this list includes civilizations that are really easy to play at first and also really easy to master and you'll get to good results rather quickly without having to overthink it with these sips all that said let's hop into number five with a civilization that is quite special to me at number five, we've got the Huns. This is a civilization that's special to me because I used to play this all the time. And it's actually the civilization I started with myself. Back in the day, 2013, 14, when I first started, pretty much everything anyone played was 1v1 Huns War on Arabia. It was considered one of the best of back then and, you know, the most fun to play. And it was the most popular game mode. Obviously, since then, in 2024 now, Huns have received a few changes, a few nerfs, and other civs just got better. So it's no longer like close to the top civ on Arabia, but it's still an easy civilization. And a very fun one to play. The reason the Civ is so easy to master is because its game plan is rather simple and its game plan is actually quite effective. Make as many cavalry units as possible and make as much army as possible and attack your opponent to try to control the game that way. It's a very fun Civ. You're always playing with a lot of armies, scouts, archers, cav archers, hussar, paladin, all kinds of even Tarkin, all kinds of very flexible cavalry mobile units to control the map. Your cav archers being at a discount lets you really spam them up. All lins are super easy to pull off and quite deadly as well if you can catch your opponent off guard. And I think the Huns have some holes in the tech tree and some weaknesses, like their infantry is not that great, their siege isn't that great, missing onagers, missing bomber cannons, but I still think Huns have enough to end games, uh, you know, whether it be it from the mobility or just the more accurate trebs, Huns definitely have the tools to close out games, and I think that the Huns are definitely an easy sift to pick up. Also, the fact that you don't need any houses makes it extremely easy for beginners to focus on the rest of the game, not have to worry about houses. Yes, it could build some bad habits. If you switch to another sieve, you get housed up the ass. It happens to me as well. Well, it's easy to overcome that though once you're a better player. So don't worry too much about that bad habit. If you're gonna pick up Huns, just stick with them for a little bit. Put in 10, 20, even up to 100 games. I put up to like two, three thousand games on Huns myself. I went crazy, and it's a really good place to start up and climb the ladder quickly. Definitely recommend you pick this up. Next up at number four, we've got a very similar civilization to the Huns. It's actually going to be the Magyars. And I promise you, not every civilization on this list will be a Cav, a Cav Archer Civ. Don't worry. But the Magyars are similar to Huns and also just as easy in my opinion because the Magyars don't have any crazy ego bonus, but they have all kinds of options. They've got Hussars, they've got Paladin, they've got Arbalest, they've got Halberdier, they have Champion. They have all the main unit lines fully upgraded for the most part, missing a few infantry techs here and there. But other than that, they've got fully upgraded units, which makes it really easy to know what to go into and to play pretty much whatever you want in the late game. They also have a really easy early game strat, which is basically go scouts and have a lot of success. You can really spam up their cavalry units in castleage, similarly to the Huns, and I feel like you have a pretty easy win condition with all the knights or switching into cav archers and having success like that. The late game is also pretty easy to control. It's going to be cav archer hussar, uh, nothing too crazy, no siege infantry that could be hard to maneuver, no monk play that's going to be a little bit challenging. It's the simple, the basic, and the fun to play with units and I think Magyars, uh, with their plethora of options in late game, you'll pretty much never have nothing to do. You'll never be confused as to what unit to go for. There's always going to be something, and I really like the Civ for beginners. Next up at number three, we're going to have a civilization that is great if you like archers, and it's no surprise, it is the Britons. By far the easiest archer sift to play, a lot of the other civilizations that are proficient with archers can be a little bit challenging, can have a little bit too many options and kind of confuse you at times, whereas the Britons are really easy and really powerful at doing just archers into crossbow, into arbalest, maybe longbowmen if you want to. Uh, they've got halbs to defend the archers, they've got light caps to raid and snipe siege, and they also have champions if you're facing like huskrolls. They have an answer to pretty much everything you want without giving you too many options and overwhelming you. It's also the only archer sieve that doesn't really die to siege onagers because the Britain range and even bomber cans to that same extent, the insane range from the Britain Arbless and, and Lombowman makes it so you can snipe those onagers a long ways away. And I think especially for beginners, the reason why archers are so hard to control is because heavy siege will melt you if you're not looking. So I think Britain's not having to worry about heavy siege is a huge plus for beginners. I also think there's not really much more you could learn or do with the Britons besides just playing well with archers and getting 
a nice economy plus the support units. They don't have any bomber cans that are a bit micro intensive. They just have trebs that are extremely proficient at taking out buildings, taking out units with the werewolf tech. There's just really not a lot lacking for the Britons, yet it doesn't overwhelm you. And I think that's a really unique feeling. I get only a few civilizations give me that feeling and Britons is definitely one of them. Highly recommend it if you like archers. All right, archers aside, what do we do if we like infantry? Well, the answer is very easy for you. I highly recommend you pick up the Goths if you like infantry. It is the only civilization in the game that can win consistently with just infantry. This is because of their unique unit, the Huskrow, giving you an easy option to take care of all archer civilizations. If you're playing against Britons, you've got the Goths. You can easily go for Huskrow spam. And yes, the Britons could go champions to defend, of course. It's not like they down this spot, but it's a lot easier to spam your Huskrows and to spam infantry with Goths than it is to to defend against it. And this is a concept that I really try to look towards when thinking of an easy sieve or a beginner friendly sieve. It's how easy is it for me to do this and how hard is it for my opponent to defend it? That is why all in rushes are really good at lower levels. This is maybe off topic for the video, but I highly recommend practicing all in rushes and doing all in rushes where you go for a heavy military and stay on one TC for a good portion of the game. This is because it's easier to perform the all in rush than it is to defend it. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this reasoning. Going back to the Goths now, when it comes to Huskrolls, most Archersivs have an answer to Huskroll one way or another, unique unit, hand cannoneer, champion, but it's harder for them to get to that counter than it is for you to spam it. Archersivs aside, if you're talking, let's say, a cavalry sieve, Goths can easily go for, you know, halberdier to shut down all kinds of cavalry play. If they're up against an infantry sieve, they can go their own champions, or they have hand cannoneer. They can go hand cannoneer and be completely fine. You have an easy option against everything, and it always revolves around some kind of infantry, which I really like. Goths have a simple and easy to follow game plan, yet they also have the right tools and options to deal with any curveballs that may be thrown at you. I also think the civilization is really fun to play, just spamming a lot of infantry and especially mixing them up like how with your champion or how with your husk girl can create some really crazy compositions. Also, being at 210 pop and just spamming 80 infantry instantly with their perfusion barracks, it's a really fun and enjoyable experience and it's one of the reasons why I think the Goths are a fan favorite amongst our beginners and old school players. Definitely a civilization to pick up if you like the infantry. Next up, I've got an honorable mention sieve before showing you guys my number one. The honorable mention sieve is actually a little bit harder to play if you get overwhelmed easily, but it's easy in the sense of the fact that you have so many options makes you never confused as to what you can go for. And it gives you the most amount of things to counter different units that you might play against. So uh, honorable mention, I only got one for this episode. Uh, it's the Byzantines. Now the Byzantines are a really good civilization for beginner players and one that's really easy to master in the sense of the idea with Byzantine is just to use counter units and this idea is rather quick to grasp easy to master you see a unit you pick a counter unit and you go for it very reactive play style you have the extra vision to help you out and you have a cheap trash units that really help if you run out of gold as well so at all points of the game byzantines have a pretty clear goal in mind and the goal is very simple and easy to follow you see your opponent make a unit you go for your counter you can mix and match counter units if need be and since the counter units are all cheaper you usually pull ahead also beginner players tend to love saving gold and byzantines having cheap trash is i think a huge draw towards the sieve and i also think just having so many different options to go for combined with the vision combined with the buildings having extra hp it's a very forgiving sieve you can take all kinds of damage and be fine with byzantine because of those few bonuses i also think the monks healing faster can be really good for beginners you can send in an army it gets you know killed or it gets weakened send them back heal them up really fast and then go back in a second time i think that's a really good and easy way to play with the byzantines if you want to make the most out of the civilization it can be a little bit tricky to know exactly what to go for sometimes you need to go for like some unique compositions like cataphracts might have to come up sometimes sometimes you need hand cannon bomber cannon so like i said i didn't want to include it in the top five because it could be a little overwhelming could be a bit tricky but it is a really good sieve to just pick up and have an answer to everything if you can play it smart Next up at number one, we've got by far the easiest civilization to master in A with you. And the civilization I recommend to pretty much all beginners, it is the Franks. This is literally the bread and butter of cavalry play. Super straightforward, super simple. And the best part about the Franks is not the fact that they've got Paladin with a lot of HP, not the fact that they're great with their cavalry units. It's the fact that every single Frank bonus is free. 
Think about it. There's not a single bonus that needs you to do something very specific. The berry bonus, you're already going for berries. You get the berries faster. The farm upgrades comes in for free. Extra HP on the cavalry. You don't need to upgrade anything. You don't need to build anything. It just built in automatically. The cheaper castles, you're always going to build castles anyways. You just get them for cheaper, letting you build more, letting you build them faster. Everything that the Franks have is literally coming in for free. You don't have to think about it. All you got to do is just execute the scouts into night strategy, go for the cavalry play and be completely fine this civilization is super easy to play and super easy to master they have some pretty hard units or compositions to control like axemen siege sometimes you got to go for the hand near or rely on the skirms or halberdier but most often you're going to be relying primarily on scouts knights into paladin sometimes like have to snipe in some monks but usually it's going to be all through the stable as your main win condition you also get siege engineers which makes it super forgiving in imperial age with you know trebuchets from 17 range bomber cans from 12 range uh, sorry 13 range with siege engineers the franks just feel very easy to get an advantage and very easy to win with and definitely the civilization i recommend to beginners if you like cavalry that being said all the civilizations on this list are pretty easy to pick up and pretty easy to master highly recommend you pick one of them if you're a new player starting this out and guys if you did enjoy the video make sure to like comment subscribe please like the video because the like ratio is getting much lower these days compared to how it was back in the day so definitely want to insist on the likes don't want to get to one of those you know youtube channels where i'm just always begging for likes and selling merch and all that but you know let's just get the like button up there so i don't have to become one of those guys thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace